I finally got this uh, tractor back to operational condition and I have yet to inspect a sickle bar at all. I've never owned or operated a sickle bar mower before, so this will be a learning experience for me, perhaps some of you too. So for starters, we'll just go over some of the terms and parts that make up the sickle bar mower. Uh, this big spring, they call it the lift spring. And this is the lift handle. Pull this to uh, release it down here. And then you have a couple different spots for the height of this thing, and I'll show you that in a minute. But this is uh, all manual lift. There's no hydraulics here on this uh, Model B. This bar here that's holding the mower up, the manual calls that a transport bar because its only function is to keep the uh, mower in a vertical position for transport or for uh, non-use when you're just driving the tractor around. So when it comes time to use the mower, this bar comes off completely. You just uh, unscrew that nut right there and then there's a clip down there and the whole bar comes off. Then this whole uh, mower bar here lays down flat on the ground or near the ground. This right down here is what they call the inner shoe. This flat surface here actually rides on the ground. And as you can tell, it hasn't been used since it's been painted. Then the outer shoe is up at the top right there. That rides on the ground also. And then extending out here is this bar, which I don't think is quite right. I think it's supposed to have more of a, a board. In fact, they call it a swath board. And what that does is when you're mowing, it uh, sort of forces the cut grass to flip inward like this. So it doesn't flip outside your mowing track. So I think there's supposed to be more of a physical flat board here, but I suppose that rod might do the trick to a certain degree, but we'll find out when we get it operational. And one of the other major components to this whole apparatus is this bar right here. They call this the Pittman bar. Um, it attaches to the bottom of the knife blades right down there. And, uh, and then the other end is attached to the shaft, which is, goes back to the back of the tractor and is spun by the uh, PTO and by the belt. The shaft comes in here and then it's on a, I guess you'd say eccentric rotation. So it's sort of um, an oblong travel. So in a sense, it pushes this bar in and out like this, which pushes the blades in and out like that and cuts the grass. Uh, the Pittman bar on mine is made out of steel. And the one in the manual that I found and a couple I've seen online have been made out of wood. So I wonder if they were supposed to be made out of wood as a um, intentional sort of breaking point. So like if you ran into something uh, big rather than have a catastrophic failure with your mechanism, this bar would just break and then it would stop. The bar itself from the top to the bottom, it's referred to as a cutter bar or a mower bar or really whatever you want to call it, but, but that's the mower. The silver things here are of course the blades in the manual, they refer to as the knife or the knives, plural. You can tell these are brand new. The whole knife blade system goes back and forth like this, and that's what cuts the grass. These pointy deals here are just guards, uh, rock guards to prevent rocks and other things from getting in and damaging the blades. Uh, these here, like this here, I believe those are called the knife guide plates or knife guides. You can see right here, there's a small air gap in between the knife and the guide. And the manual says that's supposed to be 1 64th of an inch. This one's a little too tight because it's touching a little bit. Yeah, this one too. So those all need to be adjusted properly. And proper adjustment seems to be the big story on this thing. The manual really emphasizes proper adjustment for this whole deal. The bar itself needs to lay down so it's not 
tilted uh, down or up. There's even adjustment to prevent a concave bow in it or a convex bow in it. There's also an adjustment to correct the whole bar front back or left and right, if you will, to keep it flat that way. And there's yet another adjustment to keep the bar perpendicular with the tractor as you're mowing. You don't want it cocked way out here like this. You don't want it bent way back here like this. You want it perpendicular to the mower. And the manual also says you should adjust it so there's a little bit of a kick forward to it. Because when you actually mow the grass, I guess there, there's some inherent um, spring back or push back from the material that you're mowing. So if you start with perfectly perpendicular to the tractor and then you run into a little bit of resistance in the field, it's gonna kick it back just a little bit. So the manual says just to start with a slight forward kick to it and uh, readjust from there. And there's also an adjustment for how high you want the blades off the ground. So you want the shoes to ride on the ground, but I think that's, I think this is it right here. You can adjust the, the shoes to be shorter or taller in relation to the height of the blade uh, from the ground. So if you want to get a real tight cut, you know, leave it close to the ground, kind of like it looks like it is. And if you want a taller cut, then you adjust the shoes out, I guess with this, so the shoes are taller. The only thing I've done so far is I've tested this uh, lift handle and it does function, so that's good, but uh, it's kind of hard to get back up. And I checked the spring tension here, and as you can see, we've got zero spring tension. And this eye bolt over here is quite loose. In fact, it's wobbly inside that nut, so. So I'll show you that right now and we'll move on from there. So that just lowered the bar all the way down and I'll lift it back up just to show you how that looks. It's not super hard to get up, but it does require two hands and uh, you can see it lifts it back up off the ground. And again, there's no tension on the spring when it's all the way lifted up. And I think there should be a little bit of tension on it. I think the first thing I'll try to do is uh, pull this eye bolt this way and put some more tension on the spring, see if that helps. I'm not sure what's going on here. I think this uh, bolt just threads into this nut and stops. And there it looks like there's another bolt over here, but I don't think those two are connected. And uh, so I can't quite get the spring off here. So I'm gonna take that nut off over there and remove the whole spring and then it'll be easy to come off that way. So now we should be able to just Get this right off like that. All right, let's see what we can do with this now. But this does not feel good to me. That bolt sheared off. You see how the shaft is bent? So what they did here for repair was they just took some random bolt with a bunch of washers to get the right length. And that bolt is going halfway into that nut. And then the other half is left for this, which leaves virtually no adjustment whatsoever. So, so I just need to redo this whole deal here. Find a nice heavy duty eye bolt like this, you know, about yay long. That way I can put a nut on this side and it will be adjustable in or out. So I guess I'll just remove this whole nonsense here because I'm not ready to use the thing anyway. I'll leave the spring off until I get myself a new bolt. That was not a very good uh, solution for that repair. And then this thing here stayed in the hole. It looks like it's some sort of a bushing. I think it's made out of steel. 
So we'll just leave that guy there and we'll try to find a bolt that's, uh, you know, about that same diameter. All right, I've got a couple different choices here for replacement bolts. This one here is a uh, enclosed eye bolt, super heavy duty. I think it's rated for up to 2000 pounds or something like that. This one is not closed completely and it's a lighter duty application. So I think I'll save this one for some other heavy duty application and use this one. So I'm just gonna open this up a little bit so we can get it over the end of the spring. As you can see, here's the old one. It's more or less the same size and I did get the same uh, size shank on it too. That looks pretty good. And it has to go on this end. No problem. So once we get this in here, we should be able to tighten this down and pull the uh, whole operation in this direction and tighten the spring tension. This will be the lock nut over here. And then through the hole. Yeah. Back this nut off all the way for now. Yeah, I think this is going to work great. All right, well, that's already better than it was. This might take a couple times to actually get the tension just right because evidently if the spring tension is too strong, then the uh, sickle bar will tend to bounce when you're trying to use it. So we got to find that happy medium here. So let's pull it out of the shop. I'll get the sickle bar laid down flat for the very first time since I've owned it. And then we'll try the up and down again and see how it feels. So I've taken a look at the uh, mechanism down there. Everything looks to be okay. All right, I just noticed something here. It's probably obvious to some of you. 
But uh, see how far the knife blade bottom is sticking out of the bottom of the mower. That should be, that should be up in there. Maybe it, this was just too far down from sitting for 20 years or whatever. And uh, they were binding up on each other because it was, you know, the angle was too great for them to straighten out when you lowered the, the whole apparatus. So let me get this reattached on the ball and we'll see if that doesn't solve the whole problem. Yeah, I think that might have done it. Just me being inexperienced with these, I didn't notice that at first. Let me lower it again, and we'll watch the articulation a little bit more closely, make sure it looks all right. So I think that might be okay, actually. Obviously it's all dry up in there for not being used. But I'll grease and service this whole thing before I uh, use it. I don't wanna turn the motor on and just engage the PTO and just go for it here. So I think what we'll do is engage the PTO, put the tractor in neutral and spin the engine over with the hand crank. We should get some movement out of this thing. The shaft should be spinning. Well, that is if the belt is tight. I forgot about this. Well, it's pretty loose, but uh, let's give it a try anyway. PTO engaged. Neutral. And ignition off. I certainly don't want this thing to fire up on me unexpectedly here. Okay, good, we're making progress here. Let's address this handle now. I mean, it's just frozen, but I think we can use some uh, little bit of persuasion to uh, get this pulled up and unstuck from that tooth down there. All right, I think we got something. Okay, we got it free. Let me get some grease. Well, I've got it moving okay down here at the base where the teeth are. The other issue here is you can see how this handle's bent up that way. I might have done a little bit of that with the mallet when I was trying to break it free, but it was kind of like that before. So I'm going to bend that back down this way. That way I'll get more leverage when I pull it with my hand. There. That feels good. 
All right, now see if we can get it adjusted properly. You can see how it's pointing down towards the front when you want it, you know, flat, horizontal. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And you can see that convex bow. Now I wanna see if I can take some of this bow out of the bar so there's no um, undue pressure and binding on the knife blades when they're going back and forth. And this is the adjustment screw to do that. So it says to remove a convex bow, you loosen this and to uh, adjust it the other way, you tighten it. There's a lock nut on here that we have to uh, loosen first, I guess. That looks pretty close to me. Let's uh, lock that down. We'll go with that. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. That looks pretty darn close to me. If you do have to make this adjustment, um, I believe you loosen these two big nuts right here, then adjust this bolt in or out. Physically move the bar where you want it, and then tighten that back down. All right, now we got that flex out of the bar, we can check the uh, clearance of the knife guide plates is the distance between this guide and the knife. So the manual says to set this clearance at 1 64th of an inch, which is 15 to 16 thousandths of an inch. So I've got 16 uh, thousandths here on the feeler gauge. That one's a little loose, but close. That one's a little loose, but close, probably good enough. This one's needs to be tightened. That one could be tightened. That one feels pretty good. That one's actually hitting right there, so we gotta fix that one. And that one feels pretty good right there. Let's work on this one first, and we'll recheck them all just to be sure. Well, there's nothing magical about this. I'm just gonna measure the thickness of these washers, see if I can find two other washers that are about 16 thousandths thicker. All right, we're looking at uh, 0 0.1000. Instead of one washer, I found two that will work. That's about 15 or 16 over. All right, let's go get these installed and we'll recheck it. So to adjust the tension of this belt, you can see this is way loose. And the belt itself is, is old and dry and cracked, but uh, 
I don't have a replacement for it yet, so I'm just gonna use this one until it breaks, and in the meantime, I'll order a replacement for it. But I wanna move forward with this project, so I wanna get this at least adjusted properly. So to tighten the tension on this belt, you have to remove this bolt, remove this bolt, and then there's shims between this arm and this uh, draw bar, and you remove the shims or you, you put a shim in there that's uh, not as wide. So this bar ends up being a little bit closer to this one. This whole apparatus here drops down that way. And what that does is pulls these pulleys just a little bit farther apart from each other and tightens the belt. Easier said than done, I think, because this is heavy duty stuff. This is just a standard bolt, inch and an eighth. And this is a square head bolt, looks like a one inch square head. So I don't think getting these off is going to be any trouble because I'll have the impact to do that. But uh, getting the old shims out and putting new shims in, that's going to be interesting because there's a, I think there's a lot of weight on this this way. So I may have to get a jack or something to support this frame while I'm putting the new shims in. I found a couple uh, replacement bolts in my drawer we're gonna try to use instead of these nasty old ones. Let's take a couple of shims out and we'll uh, Redo it. All right, that actually works. Look at that. In the meantime, I'll order a new belt for it, wait for that to come in the mail, and then we'll probably have to obviously change the shims because the new belt will be much tighter than this old one. But now we know how to do it. It's not that bad of a job. Another adjustment slant alignment check that we need to make. The pitman arm itself, should be perpendicular to this frame rail. One way to do that is to get like a carpenter square, square it up on the frame rail, and then sort of eyeball it down. You can see that's pretty darn close, so we'll call that good enough. If you do have to adjust the angle of the pitman arm itself, you loosen these two big nuts here, and then you draw this big bar in or out, depending on what you need to achieve with the angle of the bar. And it sort of triangulates the whole thing with the frame on the tractor. So regarding the sickle register, uh, the only thing they're talking about here is the travel of the knife blades in one direction versus the travel of the knife blades in the other direction. Uh, I'm just gonna make a little mark here so we have a point of reference for where we're starting. That dot is in alignment with the center of this knife right here. I'm also gonna put a mark on the end of this. The manual says there should be travel in both directions of about three and one quarter inches. So let's see what we ended up with here. Yeah. Wow, that's exactly three and one quarter inches. So now I'll rotate the belt pulley and we'll go back in the other direction and measure that distance of travel as well.
and you can see we ended up back on our mark. So it's not more, it's not less, it's exactly where it was before. I don't think this is a super critical adjustment on these uh, mowers, but the manual does say that it will improve the quality of the cut if the knife blades travel the same distance in both directions. There is more to this adjustment process, but it would just be easier to show you in the manual. This way you can read the entire process, including how to fix one that is misaligned, and you can pause the video to read the manual if you need to. So I think I've got everything adjusted reasonably well. Uh, we learned a lot about the mower itself, how it works. In the next video, I'll get everything greased and lubed up, make sure the PTO gearbox has oil and that's ready to go. And then we'll take it out into the field and uh, cut some grass.